Elgin Grand Victoria Casino Complex will open on October 15th at 250 South Grove Avenue on the east banks of the Fox River. On the 25th anniversary of man's takeoff for the first moonwalk, there was one small push for boat kind and one giant leap into the Fox for gaming time. Only Nevada and New Jersey wager more than the state of Illinois, and this riverboat is Elgin's introduction to the growth industry of the century. We'll show you three different camera angles of the Elgin's Grand Victoria Casino's first trip into the water. This angle is from the camera of our executive director, Rich Hersberg, just south of the 3,300-ton gaming boat in the press area. Now, immediately behind that, a roped-in area where folks who walked or drove and brought their camcorders to the riverboat, that's where they were standing. Rooftops are a popular place to watch for the estimated 5,000 folks. Here atop the pavilion, which when it's completed on October 15th, will have three theaters in it. The high rises across the Fox, that had a good view as well. And the famous Elgin landmark, the Tower Building, although that's pretty far away. Our second camera for the Elgin Week in Review is high atop the old Crocker Theater. And we'll show you what that view looks like in just a little bit. The projection of 11 o'clock start ran just a few minutes behind schedule for the christening, a few speeches, and then the launch itself. Bud Wilson tells the crowd to be patient. A lot of people across the river, a lot of people up on National Street, a lot of folks on the bridges. It's a big day for Elgin. Uh, let me sit tight here and let, uh, let you know that uh, in just a few minutes we'll be underway. Thanks. Our vantage point for the Elgin Grand Victoria Casino launching in just about 10 minutes from right now. We're on the southwest corner of the historic Crocker Theater. I wanted cameraman Troy as we pan back here. Again, we we're told by uh, Elgin police really to try to stay away from the downtown area as you see as we look to the National Street Bridge there with the flashing lights in the distance uh, Troy you can see all the folks lined up along the bridge their vantage point seeing that quite well then as they go up the uh, incline there a little bit they're stationed there so folks really have uh, gathered the best position that they can from as far away as they can to really that not, not many places you can stand to see the launch right here at the uh, riverboat side of course as we come a little bit closer uh, here Troy of course uh, here on the riverside and prairie the mini park there you can see folks have made the adventure there uh, and they get uh, ready to see what is going to be anywhere from six to eight to ten seconds for this launch in just about ten minutes so we've got one of the best vantage points right here again in the atop the southwest corner and uh, the uh, traffic here has flowed nicely it looks and uh, everything seems to be uh, progressing towards what will be a uh, very historical day in, in, in modern uh, Elgin history, of course, with uh, the boat going, and we'll try to bring you the best vantage point we can with the excitement right here. And if, I tell you what, if the ceiling holds out on the crocker, we'll bring it to you. This is a brief ceremony. I think the last time there was a crowd of this anywhere near the size that gathered in this part of Elgin, it was just to the south of us when the symbol of the Elgin National Watch Company, uh, the watchtower, was blasted to earth. Uh, that was a public spectacle, but it was a very sad day. That was a day for tears. Pretty dark. This is the exact opposite of that. We're back essentially on the same site uh, with a much larger crowd uh, celebrating with cheers instead of tears, a very significant day in the history of Elgin. Present on the platform is Mr. Nick Pritzker of Hyatt Development. Nick, if we could, we could roll. get away from you. Dan Azark of Hyatt Development, Peter Simon of Nevada Landing, John Ryden of Hyatt Development, who was the man that we've all learned to know in Elgin as the, the chief pusher on this whole project, not just the boat, but, but the whole uh, casino project, and Mayor George Vandevoort. And last but not least, the most important person in this sort of ceremony is Mrs. Rhoda Pritzker, uh, Nick's mom. And did I catch the whole platform? I believe I did. Uh, it's your show now, Rhoda. You're the christener, and let her go. The words that you'll hear from me are the words that are being said up there by Mrs. Rhoda Pritzker is that we christen thee the Grand Victoria. <laughs> How many times have you seen that in the newsreels? World War II classics. Hey, we did it. 
A few words from the mayor would follow, and then suddenly it was time. As you can see, the return wave surprised a few and got them a tad wet. Now let's see the launching again, this time from our camera atop the Crocker Theater. From this angle, you can see the huge wave that bounced off the west side of the Fox River. No, there were really no problems. It was just the process of getting it done, you know, knocking the blocks out, uh, checking the safety equipment each step of the way, making sure that the boat was leaning in the right direction when it was supposed to be one way and moving the other direction when it was supposed to be doing that. So there was really no hitches. It just took a little longer than we thought. I believe it's called a dynamic process, and it really is, isn't it, to, to get it into the water like that? Yeah, they've called it, you know, the situation is kind of fluid, and it certainly was today. I think that it slid right down the uh, ways like it was supposed to, and it was a great event. Obviously enjoying the moment immensely, the mayor with his wife Margie by his side was in good spirits. I want to ask where all those people are that said it was going to get stuck in the mud, <laughs> that it was going to tip over, and it was going to sink. I didn't see any of them, did you? No. <laughs> As workers continued to tie down the Elgin Grand Victoria and the 5,000 who attended began to make their way back home, many pondering their next visit to the gaming boat on or after October 15th. 80,000 square foot structure by then will have blackjack tables, slots, and roulette wheels. 1,200 gaming positions, mostly on a single deck. There'll be eight cruises Sunday through Thursday, and on Friday, there'll be nine cruises. Admission costs will range from complimentary to $5. You talked me into it. Let's take a third look at the launching of the Elgin Grand Victoria, this time from across the Fox River on the high rises. From this angle, you can see that the wave does go over the west side bank and ride up onto the railroad tracks. Let's just say that's the launching of the Elgin Grand Victoria, July 16th, 1994. Bringing the Elgin Riverboat to Elgin was a process that has happened over the past several years, seeing faces such as Bud Wilson and Mary Camacho of Center City and a beaming Mayor Vandervoort on Saturday made you realize this boat was a lot of work for a lot of different people, both in and out of Elgin. The cameras of WESE-TV have recorded many of the events leading to the launch, and this week, Rich Hirschberg starts part one of a series, Elgin's Quest for a Riverboat. This week, he traces the boat's event up to and through the year 1992. In the early 90s, the condition of South Grove Avenue was constantly changing. What once was a major business area for Elgin was being stripped of all buildings in history. The council had established the fact that a clean site would be most appealing to a developer. And after some major projects fell through, city leaders looked hard for someone to take the ball and run with it. As buildings came down one by one, the developer that would later bring riverboat gambling to Elgin was traveling around the Midwest, spying various locations for his new operation. In October of 91, Peter Simon and the idea of riverboat gambling was introduced at an Elgin Council meeting. The main purpose of the facility is to provide a place, in El is to, provide a place to have a little fun in, uh, in downtown Elgin. This is an entertainment complex that's designed to attract people. If the city could provide a site, say 22 acres on South Grove Avenue, Simon would provide a viable business for that area. But along with the excitement came some fears and apprehensions. What happens if riverboat gambling flops? Would the land structure be a white elephant? 
And what about gambling in general? Here in Elgin? With an application deadline of December 31st, there was a little pressure to okay the deal. But the resolution from the council was simply requesting the Illinois Gaming Board give Nevada Landings the license to operate. Simon would still have to negotiate with the city to get riverboat gambling here in Elgin. With the potential for millions of dollars flowing into Elgin's coffers, it created a beehive of activity. You could tune into WESE-TV for the mayor's show, or WRMN's People to People, featuring those in the mix. That money that's presently leaving our community will now come to Elgin, and we will have tourism here, uh, jobs will be created, uh, and indeed, uh, that whole operation, should it, should it happen, could be a catalyst for much more redevelopment, particularly in recreational areas on South Grove Avenue and indeed the whole downtown. Well, there's no doubt that uh, some people in the community, and in, this, in every community, this one included, have a problem with, with addictions. Compulsive gambling is one of those addictions. Currently, they can feed those addictions by playing the lottery or going to the horse tracks or betting with their local bookie. And I wish it were just as simple as to say, well, if they only have to drive 20 miles down to Aurora, well, they're not going to do it, but we know, and you know, that's not, that's not the case. The positive part about an operation like we op, that what we run, is that we make an attempt to identify those people and to make sure that they don't get themselves in trouble. The early sketches showed something much different than today. Originally, the plans called for two boats, smaller in scale, and docked to a pavilion that resembled more of a medieval castle than a Victorian gathering place. Those sketches were quickly changed as the developers got a feel for the local tastes. And as the proponents were doing their best spin job, the opposition was solidifying itself and making its voice heard. The city council even held a special meeting in November of 1991. ...is an epidemic in our society. And I do not want the area that I love and where I have lived for 22 years to contribute in any way to this epidemic. There are better ways to save downtown Elgin. I was born and raised in Elgin, okay? I've been here all my life. I just can't see how gambling is going to help Elgin. And, and I'm, and I'm going to make a stand with that by saying no. But I also to say this, if I had to make a choice for it were to come, I'd rather have it run by a professional than, than by someone okay. that's a, that what I call a quick buck artist. There are lots of hurdles to come. But a vote tonight, the only thing we're voting on tonight is to begin the process, to begin the negotiations. The vote, Fox, Moylan, Yearman, and Mayor Vandervoort to go ahead with the process. Gilliam, Popple, and Walters against the move. The Center City Redevelopment Corporation was formed to help in redoing the city's core. Mike Turner was brought in as executive director for the corporation. Part of his job was to assist in getting the riverboat operation going in Elgin. You could find him on the radio. The city is applying for uh, what, in essence, is it's an acronym, uh, Lust Funds, uh, which provides a certain amount of money available for, um, which is uh, leaking underground storage tanks. That's what the acronym is for. Um, but it provides monies for, for cities to uh, clean up contaminated areas like that. So You could find them on WESE-TV. It'll provide almost 600 jobs the day it opens. Um, it will bring a million and a half to two million people to downtown Elgin. And because of the gaming and head tax revenues, we'll generate close to $10 million in taxes. He was doing his part by selling riverboat gambling as it related to the downtown redevelopment. Said by some to be the driving force behind getting riverboat gambling to Elgin, it wouldn't be until April of 93 that he would resign, citing a change in his father's business. In August of 92, the fate of the Riverside Deck was decided. Put up in the early 70s, when the mall was closed off to traffic, it since had started to fall apart. As part of the master plan, a riverside esplanade was conceived to beautify the area and enhance the riverboat's appeal. In late October of 92, Mirage Resorts Incorporated made a grab at Elgin. However, the council was not impressed and had already signed a two-year contract with Nevada Landing to procure a gaming license. The city of Elgin told the Mirage people no, but Mirage pushed ahead, claiming Elgin as a partner. This prompted comments from then city manager Larry Rice. We have an, an agreement with Nevada Landing and we're happy with it. And our recommendation to the State Gaming Commission is that we would like to have Nevada Landing be our developer. Uh, and in fact, here are the, here's the agreement we have with them about what they're going to do. 
Either he was starving off the competition of Mirage Resorts Incorporated, or just adding some credibility to his operation, or maybe both. In December of 92, Peter Simon announced a partnership with the Chicago-based Hyatt Development Corporation. In a split vote, the council approved the new partner. Simon wasn't around to give us the details, but we did sit down with Mike Turner to discuss the latest developments. All along, the Vattle Landing really wanted to do what it knows best, and that's the casino side of the operations. Obviously, there's a land-based side of this, and, and we were interested in gaining some restaurants, some shops, some other things on the shore side, which they have really little experience in. So their thought all along was to find a partner who would come in to run the land-based side of the operations. Uh, again, the restaurants and shops, those type of things. And the Vandalini would take on the casino and run the casino like a good casino operator can do. And so as 1992 came to a close, the courtship of the city of Elgin and Nevada Landing Hyatt Corporation partnership could be seen inching along. Not yet a full-fledged marriage, but not shaken either by the strong-arm approach of Mirage Resorts. The, the coming year would present even more difficult hurdles. In part two, we examined from the beginning of 1993 to the month of the actual boat launch. For the Elgin Week in Review, I'm Rich Hirschberg. Last week in our part one of our two-part series called Elgin's Quest for a Riverboat, we took you through the events up to and including the year 1992. So we still have an eventful 18 and a half months to cover leading up to the July 16th launching. As we saw last week, so many things have happened along the boat's way that you might have forgotten some of these amazing historical modern Elgin times we've lived through. Rich Hirschberg has the details.